Is that the end of the story? Not quite. I'll get back to it in a minute. Glenn's case is really These the lesser advanced again. type cases. Who is the this second dumbass? case is an extremely advanced one. Queen However, I'll get to that life. in a moment. Really needs First, to you get must out realize more. that each transvestite the world over has you. his own particular Thinks problem. Knows everything each about case must be handled individually. Yeah, that windbag will be at it for a while. And his problem. Let's go smoke and enjoy. he isn't a hermaphrodite? No more than he's a pseudo-hermaphrodite. Glenn's case was entirely of his mind, brought on by the environment of his early youth. What about their children, Doctor? Uh, would their children uh, become the same way their father is? No. Transvestism is not hereditary. Well, what makes these men want to wear girls' clothes? Many things. But as I've said before, it usually starts in early childhood from one cause or another. Technically, each case has the same beginning, just a different set of circumstances. Are any of them actually cured? Oh, yes, many, many of them. Once the source of supply is found, it can be stopped unless the patient refuses to cut off that source of supply. Then the way I get it, this Glenn and the character he created, much as an author creates a character in a book, was invented as a love object to take the place of the love he never received in his early youth through lack of it from his parents. The character was created and dressed and lives the life the author designs for him to live and dies only when the author wants him to die. Correct except that for the character Glenda to die, the elements must be right. But to enlighten you a little further, there's the second story, that of an extremely advanced case. Let's call this person Alan. Anne. Alan had a mother who wanted a little girl. The father didn't care much one way or another. Alan did not enter the competitive sports the other boys in the school did. However, he was an extremely studious boy, and he always had above average marks in his subjects. Yet sports, girls' sports, he was always interested in, but he was rejected by the girls and also rejected by the boys. It seems he belonged to neither of them. After school, Alan would go home to find the mother who had always wanted a girl and the father who didn't care one way or the other. He enjoyed doing the woman's work around the house. Alan was becoming a woman and didn't realize it. A woman in mind only, but the mind rules. Then came the fateful year of 1941. Alan was drafted. He was accepted. And in the army, he successfully passed his rigorous training. He did not like it. But there were the begins for his particular diversions. On his weekend passes, he would go to the nearest town where he had a suitcase checked in a public locker. In the suitcase, he had the things he loved to wear, that which made his body appear to be what his mind believed it was. Then, the day of embarkation came. But wherever Alan went, the suitcase was sure to go. When war's declared, nobody is spared. If it calls you out, be like the Boy Scout who's always prepared. Within a pinch, be sunshine in a trench, be every inch the winch you've dared. When everything's gloom and cannons go boom, pull out every plume, break out the perfume that daffodils bloom. When a drag queen marches to a war zone, she'll need something more on khaki, such a bore on. War need not be void of love and beauty, you must do your duty now. With your attire, your body you'll inspire, you better should aspire to cross a friendly fire to In the fog of war, be it your mission to be at once a vision now. If out on a beach or off on a cruise, though packing a gun, this war can be won in your high heel shoes. A girl who's claim to fame to pirouettes can take the bayonets and how? Then, as quickly as it began, the war was over. Alan came home. Alan had learned all the terms directed at men like himself, but no one had found out his aversion. He was honorably discharged from the service at the end of the war. He'd received the Silver Star and the Bronze Star for gallantry in action. While he was in an army hospital recuperating from a wound he'd received in New Guinea, he learned a very interesting fact. He learned that foreign doctors were doing marvelous work with a sex change, and a woman, woman to man. Shortly after his separation from service, Alan came to me for advice. There followed many long sessions with my clinical reports and the reports of eminent doctors. 
It had been found that Alan was really a pseudo-hermaphrodite. A hermaphrodite is one who has the organs of both the male and female in plain sight. A pseudo-hermaphrodite is one who has one perfectly formed organ of either sex and one imperfectly formed one that's difficult to detect. Alan was of the latter. Alan was then given his choice. That which nature had given him was a mistake. It was up to us to correct that mistake one way or the other. Alan had to decide whether he wanted to become a man or she wanted to become a woman. Both were completely possible. Small bone, fair of complexion, his hair thin like a woman's, his body slim, hips slightly girlish. It was easy to see his decision along with the fact that he had been brought up from early childhood to believe that a woman was the thing to be. Alan decided to become a woman. This, after all the help I could give him, was only the beginning. During the following two years, he was to go through the tortures of the damned, but never was there a whimper from him, because he knew at the end of it all, he would at last be that which he had always dreamed. Life doesn't always turn out the way it should. You give it your best and still you're misunderstood. Is it just fate or is it your luck's no good? You'd give up the whole damn thing if you only could. But one fatal day a dream came into my heart. I fell for that dream. That dream was a work of art. I married that dream, though maybe that wasn't smart. Still nothing can break that dream and myself apart. Everyone's got a dream. I gotta make mine come true. Hopeless though it may seem. Foolish perhaps and dumb too. I've held it in so long. I gotta let it out now I'm here to tell you Step up and sell you On what it's all about now Everyone's got a dream Mine's in my bone and muscle Flowing through my bloodstream In every red corpuscle I have a need so strong Seems I can almost taste it Though they have warned me, put down and scorned me, nothing has yet erased it. Everyone's got a dream, mine has to breathe and live too. Nothing is too extreme, when you've a dream to give to. All that I've got, no matter how long it takes. I've got the dream now, all that I need's the bricks. So I'm ready for whatever tomorrow brings I'll take the worst or I'll take the best of things Leaves have to fall if there's to be hope for spring And nobody else but me's gonna pull the string Everyone's, Everyone's got, got a dream Mine has to breathe and live too Nothing is too extreme When you've a dream to give to All that I've got, no matter how long it takes I've got the dream now, all that I need the breaks I've got the dream now, all that I need the breaks I've got the dream now, all that I need the breaks If the newspapers had not gotten hold of the story, it would have gone untold, unnoticed as so many others in medical history. The sex change has been performed hundreds of times. However, right here, in this particular sex switch, it's not the end. Acting the woman and being the woman are two entirely different things. Alan had all his life acted the woman. Now he is that woman and has to learn how it's done. <laughs> Alan must learn how to do her own hair, how to make the correct styling for her facial contours. The proper walk must be out, the 
lady is a lady, no matter what the case may be. Continuing my own psychiatric treatment, it is my duty now to explain to Anne the duty of a woman. <laughs> Through it all, Anne loved every minute of it. Anne was indeed meant to be a woman, and now that the sex change had been completed, Anne was a very happy woman, and a woman who was eager to learn. And now was accepted by society. A woman born at the age of 24, in a world that for 24 years she had seen as a man. But a woman who now would, and was properly instructed in how to accept a woman's world. Thus, this case... Which